Okay, welcome back to Tennessee Frugal Craftsman. I have got my saw dissembled this morning, trying to replace the bearings. The bearings on this side were going. Um, the wheel was starting to get flop in it. Um, so I watched a YouTube video. Um, I think it was Creekside Maple. Uh, anyway, I'll put put the link down in the description. Um, uh, show he he was kind of going through the process and in an ideal world um, the presentation um, looks straightforward um, matter of fact for this side over here I did it followed his directions and it worked perfectly um, just popped just grab this here those wheels are just held on by this nut this bolts I should say and uh, washers so I just took those off same on both sides as you can see <clears throat> then what I did is I just took the nut itself you can see uh, or sorry the uh, the bolt itself took the washers off screwed the screwed the bolts back in and you know screwed in all the way then I used that and a puller. Now a puller is a must. You're not going to get those off without a puller. Uh, so I, this is a three-point puller. Four would probably be better. But um, hooked onto the wheel, the main drive wheel on the spokes, this one came off no problem. Just a little bit of cranking on the puller. Even though as you can see there's a little bit of of rust or formation right here that needs to get cleaned up. But when it came to this one over here, I cranked and I cranked and I thought I was going to break something. Uh, this thing was sealed on. And when it came off, as you can see here, that the back bearing, because there's two bearings back to back, that back bearing come out in pieces. It was so seized on. Um, so at least I got them off. That's the first. That's the first job. But the second job now is actually getting, getting the, uh, the bearings out of the wheels. Uh, so the guy showed, you know, you, just using a punch. Sorry, I just didn't want to lose those pieces. The guy showed using a punch. Um, uh, I think it was a 15 16 socket you know round socket and an extension and just setting it on the bearing well there I have one here yeah I've got one here right here just setting it on that bearing because these are going to be replaced so this is an old one just setting that on there and punching it out with a ball peen hammer well, that first one came out no problem, but the problem is the second one that I have, the second bearing, um, so that was the first bearing on the outside, it came out, but the one in closest to the hub, it is seized in there. So let me just pull this out here and I'll show you. So... Like I said, that first one came out no problem, but it's this interior hub because this bearing came apart when I when I pulled it out. So I've got to take this to my friend's house. He's got a press. We're gonna see if I can get that out. So this one-hour job has turned into a lot more. So you can see the way these are set up. There's two bearings. So there's one on the outside one on the inside and you press them out press them down this way so you put something on here and drive it out but there's a lock ring I took the lock rings out already the lock ring was on the front so I've taken that out already but that second one does not want to come out so I've got a job now to try to get that other one out. I mean, there's no question that's why it was probably flopping around a bit. That interior bearing was gone. Um, so 
I'm going to go over to my friend's house and see if I can't get that out. Now, he told me, you know, use some of this um, Cano. Um, um, it's kind of a, it's for seized equipment and stuff. That seemed to work fairly well, although it's best if you squirt it and leave it overnight. So I squirted it this morning. But I will pick up this video once I get over to the press and we'll continue. All right, well, we got this thing out, or I should say my friend Ron got it out. When that bearing broke, all it left was this little lip to be able to pull out. You got this nifty little high price tool right there. I don't know where you could buy that, but... At the Redneck store. At the Redneck store. <laughs> But he got just enough on the edge of it right there without hitting the cast and just slowly tapped around the perimeter of it and it popped out. Thank goodness. And now we're in the process of cleaning it up. Going to put a little oil on it, or grease on it, I should say, and put, set the new bearings in it. We got the press over here. So um, that is that is what we had to do. Those two must. I wonder if those two mark the fact for this, balancing for the. Yeah. Okay. That there's some sap on it right there. Yeah. That probably doesn't help the balance any. No. Uh, probably paint that thing down with kerosene once every hundred years, and just kerosene will loosen that stuff off. And you take a toothbrush or a scrub brush mm -hmm. and just pull it off of there. I think we'll get some white lube. Okay. I don't think we need that. Any. How about the other wheel? You got it clean? I haven't, I haven't pulled them out yet. I didn't take the bearings out. So yeah, now it's nice and clean in there. And like I said, that thing was stuck in there. Luckily there was still some grease around it. So it, uh, we just, we're here on the solid, solid surface. We just turned it over like this and you turn it over like this all you ha all you had visible was just about a, a sixteenth of an inch and like I said this here just fit in and just caught it and he just slowly tapped around it and it, it popped right out so I don't have stuff like that at the property because I'm still I'm in the milling phase so coming to a friend's house who has all the stuff is just a blessing so I'll be back when we start putting the bearings in go over to the bearing store could translate all that stuff and tell you what it is where's oh. that ring thing uh, set them right over there on the on beside Are we ready you. to stick it in yep okay we just used we just followed the instructions from that other video that I've linked Put these two back to back and just use the old bearing to tap them down in and now we're ready to put the lock ring back in make, make sure that it's all sealed this is where you need a metal detector yeah because that thing's going to take that thing pops out it goes into the stratosphere <laughs> going to take off yeah is this these are new ones no they Did came they with it no that's that's what was in the this is the old one it's the old nice one. and clean yeah. Yeah, there it is Nice and snug. They should spin in there if they're what set. This, no, this the the, the lock. Ring? I don't ring. think so. I don't think it would spin. No, I mean you should be able to move it. Ah. Hmm. Okay. So what we used on a press this worked nicely it fit right over the the bearing a few cranks and it popped out but it was in there pretty tight as you can see that was just about the right size for that drill press it's got the gauge right there this is not something that's always going to be available to the average person although we did start it a bit with the ham with the hammer what we use for those tight fitting gun stocks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> press them right in there. Yeah. Always nice to have a press around for doing the fine finish work. So yeah, this 
if you don't have the equipment, now, in all fairness, mine has, these have been on for uh, approximately a year and a half, and they've worked 310 plus hours. Um, but you definitely want to keep an eye on those bearings. What was the stuff? This is the stuff you're putting on? Yeah, I use that. This is what we're like putting an anti -seize. on. An anti-seize grease. Um, white lithium is the other. That's what I was going to use, but Ron has this stuff, and this stuff is apparently will still be sticky when the cats come home. Now that's just a gut feeling. Man. That's not that's not science there. That's just <laughs> my experience with that dielectric stuff. It is slippery from now on. We'll do that. Alright, I'm gonna finish this video. Um I've got it all back together, and it was a, it was a job. That's about uh, three three and a half hours later. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. As I showed you, that's how the bearing came out on this side, and the reason being, I think I figured out what's going on here. Something when this when this shaft, the main shaft that holds that. Uh, pulley on acts to be a thousand or a hundred thousand or something it is a little bit bigger than what it needs to be because this one the puller just popped this right off no problem as I noted before when I put it back on I put a little bit of grease everything just a slight hit with my hand it went on tightened down this one no way was it going to go on um, in the same way, you know, it came off hard. I mean, pulled and pulled with the puller. I had to drive that on, and I know that's not the way they're supposed to be. I had no under, I have no understanding or no clue of how to get that back on there other than the way I did it. I just took, um, put a block of wood across it and kept, you know, driving it in. Um, and it didn't go in easily. And this whole idea of, well, just put the, once it starts, just put the, the, the bolt back in and start tightening it down, it'll pull it on. That wouldn't do it. Um, it did it for the, about the last inch or eighth of an inch or so, but it even bent the washer. It was pulling in so hard, it bent the washer. And I flopped it over and it's on there now. But that does not come on and off easily. So there's something wrong from the factory. And if Woodland Mills is watching, there was something wrong with the, the way that went on. Because there's no way that should go on and off that hard. And it was all greased, brand new bearings, everything. And I even took a little bit of emery cloth, cleaned up the, uh, the, the, the cylinder itself. That it slides on, greased it, did everything, and it still went on hard. So everything is back on. New blade, um, readjusted all of this stuff, um, readjusted the tracking got everything set so I'm going to gas it up and put it take a run down through this log and see what it looks like and I'll be back okay I did a cut down through it everything looks looks good spacing is good on each side of the each side of the wheel everything's tight so I'll keep you posted on how much how long I just put a new double hard wood miser blade on not don't know what's going on um, heard back from the company on that and they are basically saying it's something with the saw uh, they said that you know that apparently these these here they said we're putting friction or tension on the blade but I mean I've got them set with spacings uh, I think it you know I run coolant everything you know, I run the lubricant. So anyway, uh, they're insisting that I only run them for an hour, an hour and a half at a time. This does not make sense because they're nowhere near dull, or even getting dull at an hour unless you hit something. Uh, most of the times I run it three hours, three to between three and five hours, depending on what kind of wood I'm cutting in before I change them. 
but that last one like I said I didn't even get it was between four and five before it broke so I guess I'm gonna just try a different brand uh, some people have been saying ripper blades so anyway this is this is kind of where I'm at um, just wanted to finish up the video I'm going to mill out these logs try to get some of them milled out this afternoon um, as always I appreciate you joining me um, and like I said I'll put a link to the to the uh, in the description to the uh, guy who uh, has a really good video on changing them out changing the the bearings out like I said seems like nothing goes easily for me in that regard uh, and so I am uh, kind of making an addendum to his that you may have problems getting that um, getting those pulled off and getting them back on um, so it's like I said it was only that one side and it had, had everything to do with that that uh, one shaft being what appears to be too big just slightly too big so anyway it's working now I'll, I'll keep you apprised on what's going on uh, if you would please, please like and subscribe and until next time you have a great day